So good afternoon, everybody from Ortho TV. I am handing I am handing over the session to Dr. Ashok Shah. We are live now. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to the single surgeon series from uh, Sanjay Institute. We have today with us uh, Dr. Milin Ganjewa, who is a consultant in orthopedic surgeon specialty in foot and ankle surgery. He is working at Postmed Mumbai Sanjay Hospital. Pune and Tina Mangeshkar Hospital. So he'll be speaking to us today on management of flat foot in all age groups. So I hand it over to Dr. Melin for further proceedings. So over to you, Dr. Melin. Uh, thank you, Sham, for a warm introduction. We will be talking about uh, flat foot today, and uh, we are uh, blessed to have a few esteemed panelists with us today. My colleague and friend, Dr. Amrish Bide, he is also consultant in Sancheti and Dinath Mangeshkar Hospital, foot and ankle surgeon. Uh, next, we have Dr. Ashish Ranade. He is a, a consultant orthopedic surgeon attached to Dinath Mangeshkar Hospital. His interests are general orthopedics, pediatrics. Uh, doctor, next, we have Dr. Mukesh Dharma. Dr. Melin, we cannot hear you properly. Now we cannot hear you at all. Hello? Just give me five minutes, guys. We are connecting it again. Okay.
just wait for 5 minutes okay change what the position sorry i'm very sorry about the technical issue we are facing but we are trying to connect with the uh, second laptop so we should be able to get going soon Raul, you can make me co-host, please.
you can see the screen yes we can yep uh, what you are able to see the screen the first slide okay but not this slide so now can you see the slide show now not yet it's starting i think हेलो सर या सो इट इज Screen sharing has stopped as the shared window is closed. Okay. Here, restart the sharing. Sharing has started. started yes. hearing has started i can see the first slide not okay. the power presentation now you can go to the presentation mode now i can see the desktop not the presentation okay okay you trying to share through an usb yeah download the presentation on the desktop and then share so it will take another 10 minutes okay. so we can show like this only is it not it's not moving ahead it will not okay Is there a video in this presentation? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's why it's very heavy. Okay. So it is okay, taking okay. time.
बघा तो मला याचं काय प्रॉब्लेम आहे राहुल
पावर पावर लगा ना क्या so we can see you and we can see your ppt you can start now okay can you can you see all thank you i'm very sorry about the technical which we have good afternoon everybody uh, let me introduce my panelists today dr amrish bide with my colleague and uh, consultant friend from uh, sanchiti hospital and dinath hospital dr ashish ranade he is my colleague and friend from uh, dinath mangeshkar hospital his special interests are general orthopedics and pediatric orthopedics then we have dr mukesh dharma he is a independent practitioner and owns dr dharma hospital in eroda and we have dr zahid shek who is our consultant colleague in sanchiti hospital uh, today we will try and focus on uh, management of flat foot in all age groups uh, let's begin uh, what's place planus of flat foot is basically collapse of the medial longitudinal arch now there are many stabilizers of the medial column and medial arch but the three most important are plantar fascia tibialis posterior and spring ligament uh, from superficial to deep uh, let's discuss start with the place planus in children the most common cause of place planus in children is ligamentous laxity and obesity um almost all children are flat footed due to intrinsic laxity and lack of neuromuscular control if you survey for uh, 3 to 6 year old around 45% will have flat foot most of this will uh, spontaneously develop a strong normal arch by the round of age uh, by the age of 10 years vast majority will uh, will resolve they are typically painless familiar and hyperlax if children have pain then need to rule out congenital vertical talus the stroke or bottom foot tarsal coalition which is uh, generally present with sinus tarsi or lateral ankle pain or presence of accessory navicular which will be a pain in the focal area at the navicular point generally non operative treatment for this patients involve observation stretching sure modification insoles and uh, activity modification i will not discuss at length the uh, operative intervention but just touch on one thing which is a sinus tarsi implant which is a relatively new thing or is uh, one of the company which supplies in india is hyprocure or it is otherwise generally called as arthrorhizis uh, over to dr ashish ranade now, now to present his uh, case study dr ranade yeah thank you milin uh thank you ashok thank you thank you sanchari hospital uh, is my screen visible so it's a honor to be here i am going to talk about show a example where the flat foot in a child is not physiological so a 10 month old boy you can see that on one side he has club foot which is equinus and the medial uh, arch and cavus we cannot see your screen okay uh, Yes, is coming. Yeah. 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 Yeah
and technically it's a dorsolateral dislocation of the navicular on talus so weight bearing x rays will show the talus it's in plantar flexion and the navicular is remaining above on the dorsal surface stress plantar flexion view is usually important it shows that it is not getting reduced there are various angles described but um, one can see that the first metatarsal the axis of first metatarsal it is dorsal to the talus so treatment is something called reverse sponsati or a single stage open release not going into the technical details of that in this child since he was 4 years old after initial casting a medial uh, incision was done and uh, the reduction was reduced the talo navicular and through the lateral approach the the tight extensors and peroneals were released then the kyr is passed from the posterior aspect into the talus the plantar flex talus is dorsiflexed and the wire is advanced into the navicular to maintain the normal talo navicular relationship so that's how we looked we have created a little bit of arch that prominence is gone in the medial side rarely you will see similar deformity in older children who had uh, some sort of spine surgery or spine tumor like this boy he developed these feet because there was muscle imbalance secondary to a spinal cord tumor this was treated with the kreisgren procedure which is extra articular arthrodesis or arthrorhesis which milin is going to talk in detail here a graft is placed in the sinus tarsi to prevent the eversion through the sinus tarsi and that is held with the ky thank you thank you dr ramani so i will resume now can everybody still hear me okay all right yes. so so no. so the next common thing we find in the pediatric and the adolescent age group is the presence of accessory navicular up to 12% people will have it most of them are asymptomatic symptomatic more common in females navicular bone normally has a single center of ossification uh, which ossifies at age 3 which appears at age 3 in girls and 5 in boys and fuses by age of 13 an accessory navicular is a tuberosity of navicular which develops from the secondary ossification center which generally fails to unite uh, in the childhood after the age, age and the patients generally become symptomatic there are three types of navicular uh, described uh, type 1 which is a sesamoid in the uh, bone in the tibialis posterior tendon type 2 is a, a separate bigger accessory bone which is attached to the original navicular by generally by synchondrosis and type 3 where is a complete enlargement making a almost c shaped navicular which is a bony uh, enlargement uh treatment again non operative modality of treatment involve activity restriction shear modification analgesics insoles and cast immobilization uh, those who do not respond may need surgical intervention uh, the key here is not to advance the bellies posterior tendon uh i would like to discuss one case uh now is a 34 year old gentleman uh, he has a history of trauma presented to me with a medial ankle pain he gives history of high uric acid for which he was taking allopurinol and then he previously tried non operative treatment which is rest ice uh, insoles uh, after after my consultation he had further ultrasound therapy and non operative treatment but the pain continued now before i go further i would like to ask dr amrish bide uh, what will be Uh, his plan for this patient hello yeah you can hear me yeah yeah so initially my management would be to try and manage this conservatively so i don't know if you have tried any uh, so you've tried insoles for this patient yes we have oh custom insoles were tried yeah okay so if custom insoles have been tried for a significant amount of time and physiotherapy 
and it has not worked then i would suggest surgical management which would be removing the accessory navicular and reattaching the tip post tendon okay that would be my plan okay uh, dr dharma what what do you think you will do for this patient your your voice is not audible hello yeah sir can you hear me hello yes we can hear now sir as uh, physiotherapy and conservative management doesn't work the same sir said that uh, uh, surgical uh, procedure would be the uh, ideal treatment okay yes so we we pretty much agree on what i did so this gentleman actually if you look at the mri scan here had actually fractured his accessory navicular from the main navicular and he had significant edema of on both sides of uh, uh, both sides of the fracture and this was his mri finding uh, significant sorry significant pain over here so these are the intraoperative x rays you can see the complete excision of the navicular direct incision over it uh, and you can see the repair with the suture anchor no, this gentleman did not have any significant heel valgus but if that is associated you need to release the tendon achilles as well as sometime calcaneal osteotomy may be needed uh, let's move further to tarsal coalition uh, is another uh, commonly seen problem in children and the reason is the failure of mesenchymal segmentation and it it is congenital which is mostly common but can be acquired at times you can see cn bar which is calcaneal navicular generally appears early 8 to 12 age or talo calcaneal coalition you can see in early teenage years or early adulthood as well general presentation rigid place spinous abduction of forefoot hind foot uh, valgus peroneal spasticity and recurrent ankle sprain this is a very typical of this tarsal coalition patients you can see the radiographs here on the right hand corner there uh, ap and oblique uh, view which shows cn bar calcaneal navicular coalition and elongated anterior process of calcaneus which is highlighted with the arrow uh next picture here in the middle shows a talocalcaneal coalition generally found in the middle facet and uh, the indirect evidence of that is a taylor bicking at the neck on the dorsum on the lateral radiograph or c c, c sign on the uh, lateral radiograph in advanced uh, cases uh how i manage them uh, most of them will get a ct scan either preoperatively or prior or during consultation to know the determine the size of coalition location and the extent uh, sometimes mri may be necessary to find out whether there is a fibrous coalition or there is a inflammatory pathology which is causing the trouble the non operative uh, management remains same uh, let's come to the classification there are various classification mentioned we have anatomic which we just discussed then there's a patho anatomic classification which is either syndesmosis synchondrosis or synostosis if it's bony if it's synostosis again vast majority are asymptomatic in case of calcaneal navicular the pain is in the sinus tarsa and inferior to fibula which is on the lateral side for talocalcaneal the pain is distal to medial malleus and the medial foot typically the calcaneal navicular coalitions will have some element of peroneal spasticity and calf pain uh, non non operative treatment uh, same as before shoe insert immobilization with the cast and analgesics around 30% people generally respond to non operative treatment operative treatment generally involves coalition resection with interposition of the graft and correction of associated flat foot deformity a uh, resection only if the uh, joint surface area involved of the middle facet is less than 50% or not much of posterior facet involvement uh, and 80 to 85% good results are uh, possible sometimes you need to do some additional procedures like uh, calcaneal osteotomy and uh, for severe hindfoot valgus 
for those who have posterior facet involvement or uh, complete involvement of middle facet, uh, subtalar arthrosis or triple arthrosis, depending upon the condition of other joints, may be necessary. Let's move on to the uh, pace planus in adults. Again, it's very common, 20%, some books say. Ligament laxity uh, is common. Generally, again, asymptomatic in vast majority of people. It's a tendoculus contracture who can produce symptoms in some people. Acquired is common. In fact, it is the most common, which is a posterior tibial tendon insufficiency, commonly known as PTTI. Other reasons are inflammation, midfoot trauma, diabetes, and rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, coming to posterior tibial tendon insufficiency, uh, the common risk factors uh, are obesity, hypertension, diabetes, increasing age, and corticosteroid use, seronegative uh, spondyloarthropathy. Early disease, there is just a tendinosis or tendon degeneration. And as the, as the disease progresses, tendon becomes fibrotic uh, because of repeated micro trauma. Uh, at, as the disease progresses, uh, there is an attritional failure of hand foot stabilizers and collapse of medial longitudinal arch. Uh, spring ligament become alternated. Uh, plantar fascia can sometimes tear uh, and uh, damage to plantar ligament in the form of attenuation. Leave, uh, in late stages, degenerative changes occur in the joint, and we will see them soon. The typical components of this deformity, uh, as we discussed before, is a pace planus, forefoot abduction, uh, hind foot valgus. You can see this picture, which shows very clear, significant hind foot valgus and advanced flat foot. A uh, picture on the left is a, a double heel rise. You can see the significant heel valgus on the left uh, compared to right burn just on doing tiptoe, though it corrects, that means it is flexible deformity. Uh, there are many classifications. Uh, the one I follow is normally uh, this one, which is stage one to four. In stage one, this is only tenosynovitis optibilis posterior is there. So single heel resist preserve. In some people, you can do a fatigue test in which you repeatedly do single heel rest for 12, 14 times and they get pain and you have absolutely normal radiograph. So only sign is a fatigue test positive. We'll, we'll come to that in a minute, how I manage in different stages. In stage 2A, where we have a flat foot deformity clinically, in addition to all above, single heel rest will not be possible and you see the arch collapse deformity on radiographs. In st stage 2B, additional thing happens is a four foot abduction and you see too many toes sign and more than 40% talon navicular uncoverage. Stage 3 is typically the rigid hind foot valgus. You get severe sinus tarsa pain. We are talking about the lateral pain now. Previously, people only have medial pain. Now we're talking about lateral pain. You get subtalar arthritis and eventually talonavicular and calcaneal cuboid. Stage four is a deltoid ligament compromise. You can get ankle pain or ankle OA in addition to all above, and you can see Taylor teal thin ankle mortis x rays. Uh, standard imaging is ankle AP standing, ankle plus foot lateral standing, both feet AP standing, PA standing, and supplementation with US and MRI. A typical angle I measure is the Mary's angle, which is essentially the axis of talus and axis of first metatarsal. They form a straight line. This is a normal radiograph, uh, which is a weight bearing. And look at the uh, discontinuation or look at the angle made by uh, 12 degrees, it suggests you of uh, flat foot. Calcaneal pitch, again, uh, normal calcaneal pitch, reduction in the calcaneal pitch. Uh, talon navicular coverage angle normally is less uh, less than seven degrees. Now you can see uh, Taylor head is uncovered, and that's about thirty three degrees on which is abnormal. This is also significant angle is there. Uh, Taylor's first metatarsal angle on a standing AP radiograph, which is axis of Taylor's, normally passes to the base of first. Now in this abnormal on this abnormal side, it is going medial to the base of first. 
similarly, you have a talocalcaneal uh, angle, which is radius. Uh, Sima line is both AP and lateral. This is a normal Sima line, which is a transverse tarsal joint, which is smooth line, both AP and lateral, disturbed line uh, on uh, AP and lateral in a uh, flat foot patient. Uh, how I treat this patient, uh, always start with non-operative uh, methods, which insults footwear modification, activity modification. I ask them not to jump, run, jog, cut, cutting, do cutting sports, but they can swim, cycle, or walk using insults. Physiotherapy, ultrasound, laser, tibialis posterior strengthening exercises. Please do not inject uh, tibialis posterior tendon sheath with anything. These are the typical insoles. You can, of, of course, have a custom-made insoles for severe deformities. For milder deformities, you can go off the shelf. Uh, treatment protocol, uh, stage one, tenosynovitis. Generally, there is no deformity. And insoles, uh, trial of cost, a long boot, ultrasound therapy. Operative, in theory, you can do tenosynovectomy, but most of the patients are OK with the uh, non-operative measure. As the disease progresses to stage 2A, which is a typical fact for deformity, uh, and those who don't respond to non-operatory treatment, they need tibialis posterior debridement, FDL transfer, medial displacement calcarean osteotomy. Now, this is the importance of weight-bearing X-ray and talon navigator uncoverage. When you have this much of talon navigator un uncoverage, then you need to add events lateral column lengthening, and cotton osteotomy, we'll look at that in a minute. And some additional procedures we have to add is uh, tendrochilis lengthening, spring ligament repair, or sinus tarsi implant. Once you come to the rigid hind foot, triple fusion, TA lengthening, and once you come to deltoid ligament compromise or ankle OA, it's a time tailor fusion. Sequence of surgery for me, generally, I do it in two positions, lateral and supine. In lateral, there's a gastroc release, or TA release, calcarean osteotomy, Evans osteotomy if needed, septal implant if needed. So in supine position, FDLs transfer, spring ligament repair or reconstruction on plus minus cotton osteotomy. Uh, this is how I typically do medial displacement, calcarean osteotomy, uh, incision, osteotomy, primary fixation with the K wires followed by screws or plate. Generally, distract uh, after distraction, displaced by a minimum of 10 to 12 millimeters. Uh, four foot abduction, uh, if more than 30 degree, Evans osteotomy is done. Uh, use the forceps as a guide in sinus tarsi, and the osteotomy cut is between medial uh, and sorry, middle and the posterior facet. Uh, keep the medial cortex intact and the laminar spader and fixed with the plate and bone graft. Arthrosis or hyperocure of uh, subtalar joint uh, stent. Generally, I reserve this for pediatric age group, young adults, as a supplementation in high BMI patient along with flat foot reconstruction, diabetes mellitus, and those who are non-compliant patients. Uh, I would like to discuss next case now, 60-year-old uh, female, medial ankle pain, uh, flat foot and tibialis posterior tendinitis on MRI. Uh, she's tried all the non-operative me measures as stated before. Uh, it is stage two flat foot. Uh, discuss restriction uh, versus hyperocure. My question is to Dr. Ranare, what will you do? It's a 60 year old. I will you. You are Amrish. Dr. Amrish? Hello. Yeah. Any, any thoughts? Yeah, so I have used hyprocure uh, generally in the sort of adolescent age group. I have never used it in an older patient. Yeah. So as per my experience, I would generally go for um, reconstruction, like uh, medial calcaneal osteotomy and uh, FDL transfer. That would okay. be generally my, what I do. Okay, okay. Dr. Zahid, Dr. Sheikh? Yes, sir. you have any experience, what will you do? Sir, I go with Amrish Bidhe, sir. Uh, we'll go for the same in this Thank condition. Reconstruction. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So this patient was counseled before and uh, she had some issues mobilization. She was very well uh, worse with the hyperocore implant. She read all about it, all reviews and everything. And we decided to go for hyperocure on its own without any other procedure. So this is her, uh, you can see her left foot here, significant medial swelling. Arch is not completely flat, so she was a candidate for hyperocure, and she could. Candidate for hyperocure. Uh, these are her pre op not a significant uh, changes in the regards to four foot valgus, but you can see break in the marriage line and a complete flat foot. This is what I do normally. The incision is just distal to the lateral medials, and the implant is placed in the lateral view. This is what I test intraoperatively: the four-foot uh, uh, supination. This is prior to implant. You can see after implant, it has reduced. It reduces the load on the tibialis posterior by 50%. That is the theory of doing a hyperocure hypro implant and uh, restricting it. These are the final pictures. And uh, because of lockdown, I haven't seen the patient, but she is she has seen my colleague uh, in Bombay and she's really happy with it and fine. Uh, let's uh, present you another case, 25 year old cricketer, medial ankle pain, deep post tendinitis, no response to non-operative treatment, uh, hyperopia plan. So these are his uh, clinical pictures. It is the, his right side, which is symptomatic. And uh, 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 this is his uh, pre x This is with the implant. Uh, so I'll carry on further and we'll, uh, after discussing uh, calcaneal osteotomy. We'll carry on with the medial side where you can see the medial incision, exposed tibialis posterior tendon, which is quite uh, badly uh, degenerate. FDL already harvested there, and ligament reconstruction and FDL transfer using the uh, screws of your choice. Uh, generally, I use Arthrex internal brace, and the same screw I use it for the uh, fixation. The breast being put in a patient. Now, again, when we have a four foot uh, supination, then the, uh, after complete correction, cotton osteotomy may need to be added. Uh, fusion of the flat foot, uh, we discussed before triple fusion for uh, stage three. Uh, nowadays, uh, a lot of people are doing double fusion rather than deep fusion as they want to spare calcaneal wall joint. Now, Dr. Bide, what is your experience regarding sparing calcaneal cuboid joint or just doing double fusion rather than triple arthrosis? Yes, I have found uh, double fusion to be better in terms of patient uh, satisfaction. Yeah. Uh, CCJ, I think it just makes the whole thing very rigid. Yeah. Some people actually prepare the calcaneal cuboid joint and don't put any implant in it. When yeah. it uh, sort of auto fuses or... Yeah. Um, form some sort of uh, fibrous union there but uh, lately I've turned like not uh, I've left it alone so I've just done two double fusion agree agree with you because I also moved away from triple to double and pan tether to triple so I, I, I leave the CCG alone yes agree. so this is a typical incision this is a good incision you can do expose whole of the sinus tarsi do your and if you want to extend and uh, do your calcaneal cuboid and it is right there. Uh, uh, another uh, patient who has got isolated uh, talent joint fusion, uh, triple arthrosis, another case. Uh, uh, previously, patient had implant in situ 
and then uh, she had developed severe fat foot and symptoms. So she had implant demand people are through uh, Another case study, 54 year female, stage three flat foot, fixed deformity, medial and lateral pain. Now this is how she presented to me, significant heel valgus. Tiptoeing heel remains in the valgus. You can see here. Uh, significant arthritis, we're talking about right side here. Arthritic joint already setting in. Heel valgus there. So, uh, Dr. Dharma, what will be your uh, modality for management? As we know, it's already fixed deformity. Yes, sir. So, and, sir, as you said, there's an arthritis also. Can be a uh, uh, fusion, can be done, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. So, what your, your preferred is triple fusion? Pardon, sir? You do triple arthritis, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Let's see what. So, this is the lady. In fact, this is one of the lady I did triple arthritis uh, rather than double. And uh, she's three months down the line, right? She's operated. She's quite happy, pain free. If this video runs, we can see how she walks. There's a little bit of limp still left, but she can, she's quite happy. Probably she'll come down for the other side. Uh, so. Uh, so, lastly, to touch on the last bit, which is a pantalar fusion which is really a large, last return. It's a big surgery for any patient. I tend to do extensile lateral approach, fibular osteotomy, try to do TTC from that side, and then uh, fix with TTC nail. Again, I'm going more and more away from nail, uh, unless it's a diabetic patient or overweight patient, uh, because I've seen some problems with the nail insertion site. Uh, now, this is a recently performed surgery on a gentleman. Unfortunately, it's so recent that I don't have a lot of pictures, but you can see on the right hand side, his flat feet is so advanced that his ankle is uh, compromised completely. And you can see how difficult he has during mobilization on the right side. So this gentleman uh, had a surgery a month ago and he had a... Uh, triple fusion. So he was candidate for pantalar, but the uh, calcinocubal joint was spared. Thank you very much. So any questions or anything anybody wants to discuss? Yes, Milin, can I ask a question? Yeah. The question to you and Amrish about the use of hyprocure in adolescents. Yes. So could you elaborate on that a little bit? Which patients you choose and yes. how do they do? Because mm -hmm. pediatric orthopedic world is worried about children developing arthritis because there is no long-term data available on these procedures. Yeah. So always the balance whether to do something now or leave them alone and if they become symptomatic, do something later. What, yeah. what do you think? Let's start with Dr. Amrish. Let's have his view and then I'll add. Uh, Milin, sir, stop sharing your uh, slides so that we can see you. Yeah, okay. Yes. Can you see me now? You can see me now, right? Yes. Okay. Amrish? Yeah, so I have done... Um, not too many of these, but probably about 20, 25, mainly in the UK. And they came from various companies. And one of the problems that we had with them was uh, they used to back out quite a few, some of the previous ones. So I've actually removed more of them than put them in. So um, Hyperocure was one of the later ones and they did show encouraging results in uh, some of the ones that we did. Uh, there was also a debate that I wanted to ask uh, Milan as to how long you leave them in, do you leave them in, do you take them out, when do you take them out? But that, um, in India, I have not used uh, one of them before, but most of my experience for them has been in the UK. And at the right age, they really have shown good results. I don't know about the older age group. 
So I don't know what Millen's experience is. Yeah. So basically, as you rightly said, the various companies have, uh, uh, because of the too many companies doing the job. Uh, the the one I'm talking about specifically Hyprocare and this next version has come as well in US. We are hoping to have it in India soon, which has even less removal rate than the previous uh, devices. Uh, regarding uh, your question, I tend to use them in the age group eight plus symptomatic flat foot. And nowadays I'm even offering them to even older people. As I see that 54 year lady, she was absolutely fine. And six months down the line, she has no pain and she hasn't come back to me. She might come back to me for the other side. So I am offering choices. Of course, it's the informed choice for the patient. They can go for box standard flat foot reconstruction or a hyprocure. If this fails, then subtalar fusion might be necessary for them. And uh, the risk of failure is less. I would put around one to 2%. There's infection, 1% loosening and back out. And in those cases, you take it out. Otherwise, I don't take it out. So routine removal is not uh, indicated. I just leave them alone. And they can start doing uh, sports after four to six weeks. There are people who will allow them to do sports even within two weeks. That tend to be a bit conservative on those side. Uh, regarding age group, I will avoid less than eight. But after eight, then you can just, again, very significant flat foot or rigid flat foot, already arthritis developing, then these are the really cases uh, which you should not put only hypercare. It can use as a supplementation to your flat foot reconstruction, typically in an obese diabetic patient or a person who is not going to comply in which you have excessive load on the medial side and the failure is likely. So that can also be done, but that will increase significantly your surgery cost. And now this hypercure is uh, like readily available? Yes, it is available in India. We have a, a person in Bombay who okay. comes here and does it. So he covers all Maharashtra and yeah, it is readily available. No issues. Okay. Good, good. So, Thank you. I, I agree with you. I have also taken out many in children in US. There used to be a, a stopic, something called stopic. Uh, another question commonly asked by parents is my child has flat foot. What is the likelihood of him or her becoming symptomatic in adulthood? Do we do we know? Can we really? Comment? Yeah. So my if parents ask me this question. It all comes down to a lot of things. The first thing is how much is the weight of the child? How active is the child? Is it running marathon or not? A lot of different things. So they obviously, if you, if you run on the flat foot with no supports on uh, your leg, then the most common symptom people get or come to me are tibialis posterior tendinitis, which is a medial ankle pain. And as the disease progresses, lateral ankle pain because of peroneal impingement. So it, you know, the, whether he will become symptomatic or not, uh, these are the factors which make people symptomatic. Dr. Bide, you agree with him? Yes. Uh, what I have found is actually the proportion of uh, congenital flat foot in India, I think is very underreported. So I think it is much higher than what we think. I think almost 40 to 50% of people who come to my clinic asymptomatic have a congenital flat foot in yeah. adulthood. So I would ask the parents uh, of this child who has a flat foot, whether they have a flat foot or not. Yeah. It is likely that their kid might have flat foot in adolescent when he becomes an adult. And not all adult flat foot are symptomatic, uh, especially that uh, those who have a congenital flat foot in adulthood, not all are symptomatic. So my whole family has flat foot and none of them are symptomatic and they do all sports without it. Yeah. So I would say they can get a flat foot, but not necessarily that it will be symptomatic. Yeah. So again, I, if people ask me, what about, shall I do sports or shall I stop my child doing sports? I said, you can do the sports as long as you have a sensible footwear. And 
any symptoms develop, especially in the region of tibialis posterior, I educate them or lateral symptoms, then you must stop and seek medical opinion. So they come to you in an early stage rather than either torn tip post tendon or top uh, spring ligament or something similar. So uh, I have a question, Milan. Yeah. So again, I'll, on the same topic of uh, adult uh, congenital flat foot. So some of these patients who are not symptomatic for a long time then become symptomatic later yeah. on. Sort of acquired adult flat foot yes. in setting of a congenital flat foot. Yeah. Now those are very difficult to classify according to our conventional classification systems because if you see their other foot, it is also flat with too many toes sign positive, but they are having no pain in that one, but have just started pain in the one of the feet. So yeah. what would, what do you do in such a case? Because if you go according to the protocols, yeah. classification systems, then you would want to put it in like stage 2B, but uh, I don't know whether they are actually. So obviously your question is uh, very, uh, very interesting because uh, uh, these people are not typical PTTI, but they are actually the congenital types who are becoming symptomatic. But then if they have developed, not developed symptom for such a long period of time, and if now they develop symptoms, I actually treat them as if I will treat, uh, treat PTTI, i.e. Uh, though classification, as we've seen before, but the classification tells you what additional procedures you need to do in order to, to get the foot uh, well aligned and uh, shape, uh, maintain the shape. Apart from that, the, uh, whether it's a congenital coming into adulthood with this problem, it doesn't matter. I will still offer, start offering them same non-operative treatment, either hypocure or standard flat foot reconstruction. Okay. Dr. Dharma, any questions from your side? No, sir. Thank you, sir. It's a nice presentation. Do you see a lot of this uh, in your uh, practice, uh, especially yes. children? Yes, sir. In children, sir, I've seen. So, again, in children, uh, the typical complaint they get is uh, calf pain or the medial knee pain. They get lateral hip pain or back pain. So these are the symptoms and normally we tend to uh, kind of, uh, uh, most of the people will ignore them saying that you know, it is just a growing child or something, but they are significant. And I, as I said before, most of the children will develop symptoms when they actually start getting contractures of uh, tendo Achilles. So I am having one question, sir. Yes, Zai, Dr. Zai, please. Uh, so, what is your take on the role of orthosis um, in, in children, adolescents, uh, which have just, uh, been, as compared to uh, stretching exercises, standing exercises, or starting with an orthosis? Yeah. So, uh, means which should be preferred first? Cause orthosis also that it uh, develops and tendency dependency. Yeah. So, means what should be that take means? Uh, First, to start with the intrinsic and the standing exercises, and when to start with actually, when is the need to start with an orthosis? Yeah. Um, so, uh, as I said before, most of the children, some parents are very uh, uh, curious and they are uh, guided by somebody. Oh, your child's foot doesn't look right. Please go and see the doctor. Then, most of these people are asymptomatic. They have come to you just for the assurance. So in those cases, I will reassure them, again, re-educate them and let the child do what he or she wants. Now, somebody who is symptomatic, the above mentioned, previously mentioned symptoms, then I always start with them uh, custom-made insoles or uh, off-the-shelf insoles if, if the child is big enough and see how much they tolerate. Tolerance and use is a big problem in all age groups, including adults or children. And if they tolerate and they're well issues, then it's fine.
but if they don't tolerate and they are starting getting severe deformity or their uh, spring ligament stretches out and it is now going towards fixed deformity or especially if they develop lateral pain or sinus tarsi pain then you really need to uh, think about surgical intervention also whenever you get this teenager people you have to rule out any coalition so x ray and pretty much uh, mri might be necessary in lot of patients to rule out what's going on there it's not not all the uh, fibrous arthrosis or uh, fibrous sinus uh, uh, you will see on the x rays so you may need to have some scans on this paper thank you sir so my pref i prefer them not to play sports whilst they have you know tendinitis start the treatment and then restart and after restarting it if recurs then they are really should have surgery i offer them surgery whether they want to take it or not yeah right if i can just add uh, something to that okay. so your question was what do you do first so more uh, sort of physio first or yeah. um, orthotics first so what i have found is quite a few of these kids have got extremely tight uh, calf muscles you know, so gastrocnemius is extremely tight that contributes to the flat foot deformity to an extent so what happens is if your uh, gastrocnemius is very tight you know it doesn't go beyond 90 and the only way it can go beyond 90 is if your foot twists okay so that sort of contributes to stretching of the ptt as well okay and in these patients if you just start with the custom orthosis so what they do is you have a medial ridge so medial uh, elevation so it will not allow them to twist but the tight gastroc will not allow them to go up as well so you know sometimes that starts causing them pain so actually it has to start so everything has to start at the same time and that gastroc stretching is very important so you start with that eccentric gastroc stretching program along with your orthosis sometimes even before so because if you just give them orthosis they will start complaining of more pain in their foot okay okay yeah, agree yes. agree and i entirely agree so this is the actually additional procedure i do for a lot of these patients uh, which is a tendon oculis release or gastro release while i do the hyprocure so if they are tight and they need hyprocure they get oculis release as well thank you sir uh, how are we doing with i think we are we started late but we are we might be okay for another 2 3 minutes any questions or any questions from audience Ashok sir, you have any questions? No, we haven't received any from the audience as of now. You are not received. Okay. Any questions? Any anybody else? Anything? Okay. So if we don't have any questions, we can uh, come to the end of the session. And I think it was a really good session on flat foot, and a lot of points were covered, especially in in terms of cases and. uh procedures even the videos of patient result were really good so thank you very much uh, dr milin and i'd like to thank all the panel who contributed with cases and discussion points so thank you very much and we can end this presentation now thanks a lot thank you all thank you